Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for your crypto neo, your news, education, and opportunities. My name is Jacob, and I'll be your host today. Um, today's going to be a little different um, than what we normally put out here on uh, Wise Beyond Bitcoin. Today is going to be something that I put out uh, more for me and for everyone in this space. Uh, I feel that a lot of us neglect our mental health in this space and that we uh, spend our time doing things that are negatively affecting our mental health and our self-esteem. And I think that it's really important to address those things. So today we're going to be focusing on mental health in the Web3 space, some of the opportunities to be able to better yourself and some of the opportunities to meet new people in the industry and new people in this space who really have a goal of trying to make their lives and ultimately your life um, a little bit easier for you and for everyone around us. And I, I'd like to start off with uh, pointing out a specific DAO that I've joined and become a part of that I honestly feel blessed to be a part of. Their whole goal is centered around mental health. And I think it's extremely important. Some of the tools that they provide for people being able to, to offer that. And they have regular meditation, 10 minute rep meditations to, that take part within Twitter. So it's almost what they call a, a metaverse meditation where you could get together with people and go through a guided meditation. You can go through and relax your body, relax your mind. I think it's important to be able to, to do that. I think it's important to be able to really hone in with yourself. One of the most intimate relationships we're ever going to have as human beings is with ourselves. And I love what they're doing. I, <laughs> I can't express it enough. I absolutely love what they're doing. It's, it's so nice and fresh and refreshing to see people in this space who want to help others. And not just what I mean by giving back, but I mean deep down, they're giving that gift of clarity of providing mental health resources for people in the crypto space for people all over and i think it's really noble some of the goals that they have wanting to get licensed and educated professionals to be able to to reach out and to be able to offer hotline numbers and to be able to offer these resources that you may not even be aware of and so today we're really just going to be going through some of these resources and uh it's important to, to go through these. I mean, a great example is the suicide prevention hotline. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter what your background is. We're all susceptible to falling out of love with ourselves. We're all susceptible to feeling empty, to feeling lonely, to feeling incomplete. And we're all susceptible to her mental health taking a decline, seeing that there's a push and a movement towards mindfulness is huge. And I just can't express that enough. Over here, we have their Discord, which I happen to be a part of. If you ever wanted to check out some things, I post uh, on Web 3.0 our web three one oh one and i just try to post educational content there just to help out for people who may be new to the crypto space but they have all kinds of things here from being able to introduce yourself your background being able to add ideas having a chat room where you can hang out with people get to know them um talking about mindful moments when you wake up in the morning. There, there's so much support here within this space that I feel goes unnoticed. And I'd really like to give a shout out to Bruno, who personally reached out to me for things that I'm going through. And it's been awesome. 
being able to have people in your life who encourage you like that, who, who help you. And Bruno is kind of the, the leader of this uh, interverse, so to speak. He is the person who organized the beginnings. And I really can't thank him enough for being able to be a part of this. Um, it means a lot to be able to, to add value to this community. And it means a lot to me personally that more people look for mental health resources. And so one of the other things I'd like to share is their uh, partnership with Being Buddha. And when I say partnership, really what I mean is Being Buddha is an NFT collective or an NFT generative collective series that's actually pretty awesome. The series itself, if you can see here, flows with the breath. So the NFTs themselves, as you breathe in and out, you time it to the NFT. And it's a, it's a form of meditation, a breathing meditation. And I think that's awesome that they're doing regular meditative um, series. They're metaverse meditations with the interverse. And I think that's absolutely amazing that they're offering really an NFT that is here for your mental health. And yes, you don't have to purchase one. You don't have to have one of these to be able to practice breathing exercises. It's just as easy for me to come here and just take a moment and breathe. Time your inhales and exhales with the expansion and contraction of your NFT. I personally think that it's awesome that they, uh, they've looked behind the science of it and have timed the breath to flow in and out. And it's interesting because I, I was on a call uh, not too long ago with being Buddha um, during their meditation session. And I asked a few questions about why they have that specific timing. And they explained to me that the timing behind that is actually a breathing exercise. Uh, it's a mindfulness breathing exercise that is supposed to help you with focusing on the breath. And I really think that that's awesome. That's absolutely insane. And <laughs> it's great. But um, more than just Web 3.0, I really do want to touch on mental health in general. So I'm going to share two resources that I've been using for my mental health, and that is lifeclub.org. And this has no tie to the Web 3 space. This is purely a mental health resource that you can go through and just take a look at. Some of these articles are a little bit older, sure, 2019. But I still think that that has an amazing amount of education behind it that really gets you questioning things about yourself and your, your personal experiences. And they have a lot to offer, whether it's not feeling purpose in the things you do, fearing, feeling vulnerable, working on your work ethic, uh, understanding more about happiness, on overcoming anxiety, effective communication, depression, anxiety, habits, whatever it is that you're struggling with, it's nice to be able to know that there are people in this world who've been through that struggle and who've overcome it. And when you get to hear from some of these people and you get to hear some of their stories, it's awesome. I personally think that habits is a massive one for myself because I sometimes, not even sometimes, I absolutely have a hard time creating a new habit. And the analogies that they use are just amazing because it makes me understand that I have an emotional self and a rational self. And it's why I would tell myself I'm going to work out or I'm going to do this. And then when I don't do it, I feel terrible because instead I did something else. And it's a part of understanding yourself and what really works best for you. I think it's amazing some of the 
the resources that they offer talking about willpower and how you can use the stick of willpower to beat your emotional self into place. But really what it is, is you want to create a, a habit, a habitual thing that you do. So that way the elephant, the emotional self is just guided down that path because it goes down that path regularly. So the rational self uses less and less willpower when you create a habit. And I think that's, uh, that's something really interesting to talk about. I think uh, one of the other resources that I've been personally using is the Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. And it is an amazing book that I have been using, highlighting, going through. And there's just so much information in this book. Um, it was written by Nathaniel Brandon, or yeah, Brandon, I said that right. And they, in the book, they call him the father of the concept of self-esteem. And yeah, that seems a little, uh, little out there, a little, you know what I mean? Self-esteem is this thing that like we've all had, or humans have had throughout history and great philosophical questions, but there really is a wealth of knowledge in this book. And I'd like to go through and just explain the six pillars for a minute. Uh, the first pillar is to practice living consciously, to have awareness over your actions and your emotions. And that's a really important one to have, especially in the crypto space where everything's moving a million miles a minute, right? The next pillar is to practice self-acceptance. And I feel that this is one that a lot of people struggle with, myself included. Um, Self-acceptance isn't easy and it's hard because you want to deny the things you don't like about yourself. And I would say that one of the teachings from this book that I, I really learned from was that you don't have to start off right away accepting everything you don't like about yourself. Start off by accepting that you have a mental block against those things. And over time, that mental block eases. And it, it's, it's so weird how, how that works, but uh, it, it does, it really, really does. Uh, the next pillar is the practice of self-responsibility and understanding that uh, you have the responsibility to create your own happiness in this life and it's no one else's responsibility to do so. You have the responsibility to turn your daydreams into reality, to turn them into your passions, your goals, your purpose. And when you don't, ultimately your self-esteem, it suffers. The next pillar is the practice of self-assertiveness, which is not abrasive, but rather asserting your right to be happy, your right to enjoyment, your right to be able to, to be yourself and to assert yourself, not pretend that you're somebody else or ponder to somebody else. And I think that that's something a lot of us struggle with too, which is another reason why I just really recommend this book. The next one after that is the practice of living purposefully. And now I think a lot of people have this question about purpose and what that means to them. And I feel like that is really something that we all kind of struggle with. Like it's been the great philosophical question. What is my purpose in life? And I feel like the thing that we kind of don't always see is that it's different for everybody. I have a quote in this book that I'm gonna find really quick. I've highlighted it, but I've gotta find it. Um, there it is, there it is. And this is a quote about purpose because I think a lot of us get confused and think that purpose means that it's our, our life's meaning and this and that and really, to live purposefully is, among other things, to live productively. 
And so what do you ask yourself? What do you find productive with your use of time? It is not the degree of a person's productivity that matters, but a person's choice to exercise such an ability. So it doesn't matter how, how productive you were today, tomorrow, the next day, but just the facts that the fact that you chose to be productive. And I think that that's something that a lot of people struggle with beating themselves up because they, they wish they could do more. They think they could do more or this or that. And I feel like as, as, as long as you recognize your productivity and that you're moving forward, you're taking steps, that's massive, massive, massive. To live purposefully is to be concerned with these questions. What am I trying to achieve? How am I trying to achieve it? And why do I think that these means are appropriate? So ask yourself those questions when you're looking for purpose in your life. And the final pillar of self-esteem is to practice personal integrity. And really personal integrity is your values. Ask yourself, what are your values? Know what your values are. Uphold them. If you see somebody who is getting made fun of or you see someone who's being bashed on at work or something and you don't take kindly to that and you feel that that's something that isn't, that goes against your personal integrity, speak up. And don't be afraid to speak up and be yourself. Don't be afraid to alienate yourself because you're holding yourself to your values. When you conform to other people's values instead of upholding your own because you're afraid of being alienated, ultimately your self-esteem suffers. I really learned a lot from this book and I'm gonna continue to learn from this book. I have a lot of personal things that I'm going through right now. It's part of the reason why I haven't been as active as I would like to be on these videos. But this video has been helpful, not just for me, but I hope for some of you out there. It's a little different than what we do here at Wise Beyond Bitcoin with news education and opportunities, but I wanted to take the opportunity to be able to spread some love. I think it's important that we all feel a little bit of self-love. I think it's important that we practice it because self-love ultimately isn't a feeling it's a practice. It's a conscious effort to tell yourself every day that you're going to do something for you. And it's definitely not an easy one. I hope some of these resources help. I hope you enjoyed your time here with me. And until the next time, namaste.